Namaskaram to everyone. Are you? Very happy to uh, extend warm welcome to Yogeshi from uh, New Jersey. Namaskar, sir. Are you home to you? So uh, you are joining us today, I believe, for the first time for the Upanishad class. I know not of your of your exposure background to philosophy, but Upanishads are considered the, the quintessence of Vedantic study. And these texts are very cryptic and very subtle. So you would find at times the, the conversation is little intense with certain technical terms used, which the, the other members are quite familiar. So if there's anything that you are unable to follow, you see clarification, uh, please feel free and I will be more than happy to clarify. Okay. So we'll, we'll take mantra seven, please. Uma Sahayam Parameshwaram Prabhum Trilochanam Nilakantam Prashantam Dhyatva Munir Gachati Bhuta Yonim Samasta Sakshim Tamasa Parastat Uma Sahayam Parameshwaram Prabhum Trilochanam nila kantam prashantam Dhyatva munir gachati bhuta yonim Samasta sakshim tamasa parastat Umasahayam Parameshwaram prabhum Trilochanam nilatantam prashantam dhyatva. The word dhyatva refers to meditating upon Parameshwara. <clears throat> and who is Parameshwara? Uma Sahayam, the concert of Uma. Trilochanam, the three-eyed, Nilakantam, the blue-necked, Prashantam, perfectly calm, Prabhum, he is the Lord. <clears throat> he is the sage, Munihi, witness of all, Reaches the source of beings transcending tamasa parastat. Parastat means you go beyond tamas ignorance. Samasta sakshin. He is a witness of all. Right. So uh, you would note this mantra is in contrast to the sixth mantra which we studied. He describes the Brahman in the sixth mantra from the Brahman is the, the goal, the absolute reality. In the sixth mantra, Brahman is being described as a formless reality. <clears throat> so he said, Achintyamavyaktamanantarupam. Achintyam, it is inconceivable. It is un These were the terms used in the sixth mantra. Now, here, he describes that very same Brahman 
from the perspective of a form with reference to a form. Now it is very <clears throat> traditional. Uh, how uh, the Shastras of the highest order always depict Brahman as the formless reality. However, as I've said, there are places in the text you find the form gets introduced. See, the Arjuna asks this fundamental question to Lord Krishna in the Gita. He asks, am I to worship God with a form or am I to worship God without a form? Lord gives a very clear apt answer. Obviously, you got to worship a God with a form. Now, in that context, it was being capacity because Arjuna I'm getting feedback that there's some issues with the transmission. I'll beg your patience. Uh, I will try to switch to another system. Perhaps that will help. I hope you got my message. Karyom, am I audible now? 
Okay, all right. So, uh, I was saying that the, the Lord in the Gita advised Arjuna to worship a God, worship Brahman God with a form because he clearly understood the capacity of Arjuna that he couldn't relate to the formless reality. Now, in the Upanishads, the, the students here of a very high caliber they should be able to attune to the formless reality. However, just to accommodate those who cannot attune to the formless reality, the text in the seventh mantra, he inserts the a form. So the form here refers to the Lord Parameshwara, Lord Shiva. So the concept of the Lord is Uma. And in fact, the Uma represents the scriptures. Uma is the daughter of Himavan. The daughter of Himavan is Uma, who is also known as Parvati. Goddess Parvati is the concert of Lord Shiva. So, what it means is you need in fact if you remember you remember oh I don't know, I'm afraid, what can I do? Yeah, I, I, I believe uh, the problem is with the network. We had some issues, it got rectified, so it could be teething issues. So. so if you remember the the Kino Upanishad as well, you know, of the the story where the gods won over the, in fact, uh, the gods who had won the battle over the the demons, they were celebrating and to teach a lesson of the, the vanity the gods had developed, you know, uh, there was an apparition that was seen and they couldn't ascertain who it was and there appeared uh, goddess Uma. So there is a mention of Uma in the Upanishadic studies. So meditating on Parameshwara, again, he's qualifying it. Parameshwara is the is the Lord. Now, when you whenever you use the word Lord, Lord means that which has the power to control. 
So the Lord here refers to the transcendental reality, which has the power to control the entire terrestrial realm or the terrestrial world. Just like electricity has control over all the gadgets without which nothing functions. In that sense, it's control. So the Lord here is that which controls the entire activities of the terrestrial world with it. Remember, the one of the best descriptions or definitions of God we've often referred to. Brahman or God could be understood as that with which everything happens, without which nothing happens. And yet it has got nothing to do with the happening. I repeat, with which everything happens. Brahman is that responsible for all the activities to happen. Devoid of its participation, everything ceases to exist. Nothing happens. And yet it has got nothing to do with the happening. Like everything that's being transmitted or not being transmitted, has anything electricity got to do with it? Electricity has got nothing to do with it. It is giving, energizing every possible gadget. It's plugged in. <clears throat> but electricity has got nothing to do with it. It's the Lord with which everything is functioning. So if the system is working well, you can't thank electricity. If the system is disruptive, can you blame electricity for that? None of you said, sir, something wrong with your electricity connection, sir. We have to complete the electric board. Ramji only said, problem with the Wi-Fi. But you never told electricity is the problem. So, electricity is like the Lord. It has got nothing to do with the, the quality of actions, the quality of the, the performer. The performer is the individual, the jiva. So Atman has got nothing to do with who you are, what you are. Brahman has got nothing to do with what actions you perform. And it can be the noblest of actions or the worst of deeds you perpetrate. Brahman has got nothing to do with it. Therefore, at the later half of the mantra, he says, it is a witness of all. It is a sakshi. So, in fact, one of the, the spiritual qualities, you would blossom, a human being would blossom with these spiritual traits. One of the such spiritual qualities is you become a witness to the happenings. Now, my simple question is, how should one how can one become a witness to the happenings around us? The opposite of that is you get involved. The opposite of that is you, you, you get carried away. You get affected. But he says the, the Brahman is a witness to all. They can be Many things that happen around you, the things could be favorable, things could be unfavorable, but how do you remain a witness? Towards the good or the bad, towards the praise or censure, towards profit and loss, towards birth and death. Life is a procession of many things that keep happening. How do you maintain a witness? U.S. Uh, you have to be objective. You stand apart. Don't get involved. Be objective to the happenings. That's precisely the question. How do you remain objective to the happenings and not get involved? Sakshi, being a witness or being objective is one and the same thing. You may give me love and respect. 
you may disregard, denounce me. Now, how do I maintain an objective witness to either praise or censure? That's the nature of the world, isn't it? The world will only throw either praise or censure. But how do I maintain an objective witness to that? So the, you are only repeating the question. How do I? The question is, how do I maintain? Where do I get that strength from? Where do I get that quality? I'm in fact giving you a, a lead here by rephrasing it. Get that that lead to maintain a sense of object. You can't hear me or you don't know the answer? I can't hear you. It's breaking. Oh, you can't hear me. Then <laughs> do I, should I connect to, uh, uh, let me try that as well. Does this help? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Just understand that the world will throw all this at you, as you said, and be, and the, don't get involved in. That's the only way. That's the objectivity that you not get involved in anything. Let it not uh, bother you affect, or topple you. Affect you, yeah. Effect, yes, but that's the effect. See, the effect, yeah. I'm asking the cause. What's the cause or what you should do to remain unaffected? Otherwise, the natural so-called unnatural state has become natural to us, but our natural state you should remain unaffected, but now everybody is subjected through uh, If you have a sattvic quality in you mm. you will become you will, you not <laughs> I mean you understand You thought you got the answer is it? No <laughs> I'm just trying my luck <laughs> No, I know, I know that mm. Yes, ma. Yes, Ituji. How to maintain a witness of objectivity to the world? Cause is ignorance. We have to uh, uh, prove our intellect. We have to remove our ignorance by gaining wisdom. I can't say you're wrong, but uh, uh, this could be a, a generic answer. Can't this be? You can say you need to develop your intellect to a lot of things. You need to gain wisdom can be a generic answer. Ignorance is a generic answer. But how do I maintain objectivity with reference to the world? Where do you get that quality to become objective? As you shed ignorance, you become objective. It is uh, proportional to uh, spiritual quotient. Yeah, it is. In fact, as I said, your spiritual quotient is measured your spiritual quotient is measured with how objective you are. Okay. Ramji, any idea?
Namaste Guruji. I can only think of being detached uh, from, uh, I mean, being detached and not getting emotionally involved with uh, things around you, but that comes through only using your intellect. Um, I mean, it is the same thing what Saituji said, I'm repeating, but uh, uh, the only new word I'm using is detached, whether that will work or not, I don't know. So, good try, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I am very strict today. I can't give in any more chances. So, you have, you're done for your trial, sir. Harish? Guruji, may I attempt? Please. Guruji, uh... What I can think of is have no expectations whatsoever from the world because whatever is happening is all temporary. This too shall pass. So have absolutely no expectations to praise or censure or from the world whatsoever of any sort. I don't know whether that would cover this realm of uh, thought. You're not wrong. Not wrong. I would still be open. Sushmama. Guruji, can we think of it with Nitya and Anitya and say even this shall pass away. Nothing is going to be permanent. So if, if we be more objective that even if it's something not to our liking, it's going to be pass away. And if we like it, that is also going to be sooner or later it'll pass away. I would look at it maybe like that. It is, in fact, yes, that's that's one of the perspectives to have that nothing is permanent, it is ephemeral, you know, so nothing comes to stay. So you you remain uh, detached or withdrawn from the happenings. Don't get carried away. You're right. You're right. Very true. Now uh, you're perfect, Ma. That's what. That's what. That's the right thing. Now what I'm only trying to uh, get to is, if you look at uh, the whole world, if you look at your position in the world and the Brahman. So there are three factors here. That's you, the world, and the reality. Now, the only thing that is objective, that is, as the, the mantra says, the Lord is a perfect witness to everything. Samastha Saksham, it is a witness to all. So the only thing that is a witness to the, the world is Brahman, is the reality. Now, as an individual, I have a choice to either identify with the world or identify with Brahman, isn't it? I identify, okay, let's say I identify with the equipments, not the world rather. I identify with the equipments, with the body, the mind and the intellect, or I identify with Brahman or with Atman. When I identify myself with the equipments, the body, the mind, and the intellect, the world will affect you. But when I identify with the Atman, the world does not affect you. So the only way you can practice the quality of being a witness to the happenings in the world is by identifying with the Atman within, not with the equipments. So to the extent you have identified with the Atman, to that extent you will be able to maintain a witness to the happenings at the physical, mental, intellectual. Because the world can only throw opposites at the physical, mental, intellectual, isn't it?
remember the law of attachment is as you think so you become you think of the body you become the body you think of the mind you become the mind you think of the intellect you become the intellect so whatever happens to the intellect happens to you at the intellectual level whatever happens to the emotions love or ingratitude so people are affected by ingratitude people are affected by love because they are at the emotional level those who are attached to the body become they are affected by health ill health whatever happens at the physical level they are affected but if you identify with the atman to the extent you switch your focus from the equipment to the self you become the self the moment you become the self you borrow the qualities of the self you exhibit the qualities of the self and what is the quality of the self self is a witness so naturally you become a witness to all the things that's happening around you where did you lose me so you'll be can you hear me okay see we 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 often take the example to explain the con- this concept we take the example of a uh, a metal piece a wooden piece and a powerful magnet so the powerful magnet here represents the world the wooden piece is the atman the metal piece is the individual any number of times i bring the metal piece to the magnet the magnet attracts and influences the metal piece the iron piece it influences it's drawn any number of times i bring the wooden piece independently to the magnet the magnet doesn't influence the wooden piece now what i do i tie up the wooden piece and the the iron piece together and i bring the combination it's a very powerful magnet now the combination is drawn influenced by the magnet now when the combination is influenced by a magnet does the wooden piece even though it is attracted to the magnet does the magnet influence the wooden piece it doesn't so right now i am who am i i am the wooden piece and the iron piece attached together in the world so when the world is affecting the metal piece which is the individual the body mind and intellect the atman within me remains a witness isn't it i am getting overpowered by grief because there is a tragedy in the family or i'm overwhelmed with joy because there is a celebration while i am being overpowered by grief or i am in ecstasy of joy and happiness what is the standpoint of atman towards my grief or ecstasy what atman what is atman doing to it atman has got nothing to do with it it is just watching the excitement or the dejection you are going through isn't it i am celebrating a profit or i am affected by a terrible loss my business has gone through the material profit or gain what is atman got to do with it it just a witness so while i am being subjected so the world can only affect me at the physical mental intellectual level 
Now, can anybody give me what is the complete definition of a human being here in the context? In the context, using the words or the terms that we have used now, what is the definition of a human being? Arunama. Do not use any term beyond the context, please. Yes, and yes. Guruji. Yes, yeah. Uh, I would say a human being is the uh, BMI body, mind, intellect plus the self. Absolutely correct. A human being definition is body, mind, and intellect plus the self. In 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 other terms, I'm again using a new term because you've answered it correctly. Spirit plus matter, isn't it? The spirit yes. is the yes. Atman, the matter is the body, mind, intellect. So the a definition of human being is the self plus the body, mind, intellect. So this is what a definition of a human being is. So as an individual, don't you have a choice to to focus your attention all the time on the physical aspect of your personality? Yes. <laughs> Yes, Guruji. You have, have a choice, choice, isn't it? Yes, Guruji. Don't you have a choice to switch from physicality to emotional? Very much. Physically, you may be healthy, you may be unhealthy, you may be aging, you may be young, you may be dynamic one day, you may be tired one day. It doesn't matter. It's all the realm of the body. But how should it affect my feelings? So you are operating from the feelings. So you are emotional, not physical. You may say, ah, I don't want to be caught up in the play of emotions, not the physical. I want to operate from intellectual. Don't you have a choice to switch in any either of the three? Yes, Guruji. No, don't you have a choice to switch to the spiritual, to attune to the Atman? We have the choice, but that is a challenge. Indeed is a challenge, but you have a choice, isn't it? Not to identify with the physical, mental, intellectual and identify with the self. Because this is the constitution. You are a combination of the self, the body, the mind and intellect. Now you can either choose to identify with the self or the combination of the BMI. Now, since you have the choice, a wise man identifies with the self. And once you identify, and how do you identify with the self? Again, don't think beyond the classroom. Whatever was said, how do you get to the self? The self here is being portrayed as? As being objective? No, no. Sakshi, were you there? From the, were you there? From the beginning of the class? I joined them for 10 minutes late. Oh, self is a Sakshi. Sakshi. No, the, the self is being qualified as a Sakshi, but the self is being portrayed as. Ardama, you're perfect. You're so far so good, but I'm asking something which we started the text with. Can I ask Lakshmi Ma? How did we describe? The self. Uh, how did we identify the self? Not identify. How does the mantra describe the self of Brahman to us? I just missed the beginning, but I tried to. I, I, I missed the beginning part, Guru Gim. All right. Kashish, how is the mantra trying to describe the Brahman? Guruji, from my understanding of it, I believe it was 
a formless reality, but given form in this particular mantra. Perfect. In the sixth mantra, it was the formless reality. In this mantra, the Brahman is being described as a form. What form? Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. And then how do you get to Lord Shiva? Through his consort who represents the scriptures? Absolutely. Through the consort which is represented, Uma, which represents the scriptures. Perfect. Now this, you know why I've asked this to you, Kashif? Now, when I was asking Arunama, you have the choice to either identify with your physical personality. So when you, you are either physical personality, emotional personality, intellectual personality, or the spiritual personality. Now you, Arunama said, it's easily identifiable with the three aspects of your personality, but it's difficult to identify with the self. Now, the question was, how do I identify with the self? Now, how do I identify with the self? You identify with the self through the help of the scriptures. Uma is the means to get to the Lord. Now you see it all falls in its place, isn't it? You want to identify with the self, you have to read the Shastras. You have to read the scriptures. So when you read the Shastras, you read the scriptures, as Ushama said, in the most auspicious time, the Sattvic Guna, the Sattvic R, when you tap the Sattvic R, the Sattvic Guna, the Sattva in your surfaces, so you identify with the self. And to the extent you invest your time in identifying with the self, the benefits or rewards of that spiritual identification is you remain a witness to everything that's happening. So the Shastras in the Gita actually goes to the extent and says the greatest of joy is no joy. The greatest of sorrow will be no sorrow to you. Means it does not affect you. The greatest of joy, what you can think in your life. And imagine being not being swelled by that. The greatest of sorrow, whatever that sorrow you can imagine, the greatest of sorrow would not crush you, would not hurt you. He gives the example as the, the ocean. The ocean because of the, the continuous flow of the rivers into the, into the ocean, to the seas, the seas don't swell and overflow overnight. Nothing happens to them. And all the rivers have dried up. It doesn't, not, that doesn't mean the rivers have shrunk. Uh, the ocean has shrunk. No, it doesn't affect the ocean. The ocean is paripurna, full. It remains unaffected. So this is the, the way you understand the concept of how to remain a witness. How do you achieve that state of being a witness is by identifying with the self. And self is the witness. And when you identify with the self, you borrow the qualities of what you're identifying with. To borrow the qualities. Again, when example we're taken of law of attachment is, you know, when you throw SR, when you throw an iron ball into a furnace, what happens to the iron ball, sir? It melts away, Guruji. And the moment you throw it, it melts away. Yeah. Throw <laughs> immediately. This yes, it gets contacted with the heat. As as it starts contacting the heat, the heat, it starts absorbing the absorbing the heat and get the heat. And then what happens? It takes the qualities of the 
fire, isn't it? Fire, fire. Yes, it absorbs the so cold. initially, it the iron ball had certain qualities. Fire has certain qualities. The moment the iron ball identifies with fire, the iron loses its qualities and gains the qualities of what it's identifying with, which is the fire. A time will come, iron ball becomes fire, isn't it? Right. That's true. This is the law of attachment. Now, as an individual, are you the material personality, physical personality, emotional personality, intellectual personality, or the spiritual personality? How do you want to be defined and understood by the people around you? Determines by what you're identifying with. If you want to define yourself by material personality, what does it mean, sir? You measure them with wealth and prosperity, what they have. You would measure all the time people with their wealth and material status. And you would present yourself to the world only from a material and, phys and material status. You know, I remember a guy, I was, I never lost sight of him right throughout that little time I spent in a wedding. A, a small family, uh, it was, I think it was a wedding, yeah, right, my wedding. And this guy had more than 14, 15 rings on his fingers. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And some of the fingers had two, 15, 16. And I did manage to count number of, uh, that was my only attention. Everything else I was distracted from. And how, and it, it's not small rings, they are. Uh, <laughs> Very, very healthy, healthy <laughs> rings. And that apart, and he had four, five thick gold Thanks. chains as if it was a leash around his neck, you know. <laughs> now I said, man, how gross can somebody be that you are you may have all that wealth, but do you have to exhibit it that way? Exhibit. So all the time you are taking and there are people when you when you see them, hey, you've lost some weight. Only they measure you with physicality, or they gain weight. All the time worshipping the body. Thought is only body worship. So they evaluate you from the body. They look at you from the body. They have a physical perception. Oh, you look very young. Oh, you're getting old. What are you looking all the time? Only the physicality? So there it's are like, people who have... Sorry, sir. It's like the tip of the iceberg, Guruji. What has been visible is only been seen. I think last time someone mentioning that is a one... Tenth of the portion only we have been able to see. Remaining is beneath. Ah, yes, we spoke about that iceberg. The iceberg concept. Yeah, yeah. So you become what you think of. So if your thoughts are spiritual, you will gain the qualities of self and the self is the only thing that is witness to the world. If you don't understand the concept, go back to the example of the metal piece and the wooden piece and the magnet. magnet. The self, okay. the, wooden, the wooden piece is never affected by the magnet. You are the metal piece. The, the powerful world around you will only affect the metal piece, but not the self in you. You think of the self, you become the self, you will remain unaffected. Things around you may be in a turmoil, but you will remain calm. You will remain a witness. You will remain detached. You will remain objective. So I have used all the terms which Ramji, Situji, and Ushama US have used. 
detached witness objective am i right ramji so i have taken uh, your help from you sir no no your ability to absorb is perfect sir our ability to absorb is not so good but <laughs> But you are able to relate to the quality, sir. Yes, sir. Very much. The spiritual quality is that that exhibits to the to to that extent you will remain objective to that extent. So therefore, we can say being witness is the path and the goal. You should practice it, and the goal you reach is tamasa, uh, as he says, is samasta saksham. Guruji, like you said, uh, the iron ball becoming getting the character of the fire. So yeah. for us to identify ourselves, it, depending upon the kind of people we keep company with, we can get attached to B or M or I or S. or to the Atman, right? Mm. So I think that's uh, it. So that mute absorption of other. person's qualities into you also takes place depending upon the company you keep absolutely therefore we say satsang is such a quintessential step the first step to spiritual transformation is satsang yes sir you keep wrong company you know you are molded that way so satsang is to keep away from the bad company sir yes sir is not in as much as you may say i am with the guru in the morning but the rest of the day where are you i am not saying you sir yeah yeah i know Ushama, all of us Ushama. are all of us are with the world rest of the uh-huh. time correct so it's important that you make that right choice of what food for thought is given okay yes sir yes hari ji gurji then is is there not a contradiction there when i can be i am in the world you have advised us to identify with the self and the world can never he said never and it disappeared We will not see Hari Ji today. Right. We'll we'll wait for him to join back. So, oh sorry, we'll take up when he joins back again. So, Uma Sahayam Parameshwaram Prabhum. Trilochanam, Lord Shiva is said to have had three eyes. The third eye, the two eyes known as the physical eyes, known as gole eyes, gives you a gross perception of the world. But the third eye, which is known as the jnana chakshu, no, if you have not heard me correctly, it means you don't have the jnana chakshu. there was a little intermittence isn't it so the two eyes you need to have a third ear also gayatri ma not just eyes uh, so the the gnana chakshu is known as the eye of wisdom which is the third eye of lord shiva so when you gain the wisdom you you exhibit a unique perception to life you look at it you look at life from a 
a different angle. As in the Bhajagovindam, we learn the capacity to look at life from a different perspective is known as Pratipaksha Bhavana. The Pratipaksha Bhavana means a capacity to look at things from a different perspective. You gain that Pratipaksha Bhavana, which is the Jnana Chakshu, which is the Aya Wisdom. Nila Kantham means the, the blue neck. Trilochanam is the third eye, three eye. Nila Kantham is the blue neck. If you read the stories of the Vishnu Purana, there is the story of the okay, all the while these gods and demons, nothing else to do. They keep fighting with each other. So before we get to the story, yes, Hariji. Question, my question is, uh, Guruji, when we are identifying with the self, then how does the company, other companies are going to affect me? The whole purpose was identifying with the reality. If I am identifying with the reality, whatever may be the thing, whether it is good company or bad company, that is, I, I, I will be like a lotus leaf in the water. My identity is only with the self. But if I am going to depend on my surroundings, that means uh, uh, they are going to affect me. The whole purpose is to ensure that they are in no way going to affect me in any way because I have identified myself with the self. Correct. Or identified with myself. Yes. In which case, whatever may be the company, I can be among the sin the, the worst of sinners or the best of uh, sadhus. They are not going to affect me in any way because I will be the only person who can influence me because I have identified myself with the self. Are you taking this out what Ramji has said? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, okay, so what Ramji was saying is the importance of keeping satsang. We clarified there. Satsang, so one who needs to get to that state. So, satsang is the, is the means to identify with the good or with the self. But one who is identified. How do you get to that state where you remain detached or unaffected? Is by identifying with the good. So it's just like you need to eat healthy, live a healthy lifestyle to gain health. Once you are healthy and once your immunity is strong, you can be in places or where there is no hygiene or there is ill health around you your body has the capacity to defend itself, isn't it? Because you have attained that health. But a person who has less immunity or weak is easily affected. You get it? Okay. But, but once you attain that, then you live a life like an actor on the stage. Yeah. That is, That's that a is the classic that... example. That is the objectivity. Yes. Being okay. objective to, yes, sir. Being objective to things that happen around you is to remain in it and yet be above it. And a classic example which Shakespeare gives is an actor on the stage. As he says, all the world is a stage and all men and women are mere players. So you understand it's a stage and you have a performance. Why don't you just perform, play a role and get out? They have the exits and entrances, as he says. 
So all of us have roles to play, whether you like it or not. The roles can be regular roles. <clears throat> the roles can be occasional roles. Like Sadhguruji wanted me yesterday. Very sweet of him to have me a part of a, uh, an experience. And I found myself obliged, obligated to be there. I don't want to go into the detail. Now I found it as a, a special obligation. Now is it my regular obligation? Then I'll have to shift my location, sir. What is the G? Please repeat, I am unable to hear. Oh, you were talking about yesterday's experience. Yes. I was saying, I am talking in the context of the world is a stage and Everybody has to play certain roles and responsibilities. You know, you have a role to play. And I was talking about the role I had to play because you, you you invited, you wanted me to be there. And I found myself which as a naimitik karma. I was actually telling Vasantarma, you know, it's uh, there are certain obligatory duties you have. They are not regular duties. You know, sitting and taking a satsang is a regular duty of mine. You know, but the yesterday experience was a special obligatory duty. But yet I have to perform that special obligatory duty, understand it's a mere stage, have to play the role and get out of the stage. Why should I tie up to the actors and the roles that I've played with even beyond the stage? Like uh, all drama actors and film stars. Who just to you get... have to get into the role and get out of the role, isn't it? But when you get into the role to play that role, what is the identity of that actor? Deep within him, what is the thought process? He very well knows that he is not that actor. They can be, you know, I'm just so drawn to taking examples of Shakespeare. I could be playing a role of Hamlet. Now, Hamlet was caught in such a predicament and it's such difficult stance, situation he was, you know. His father was killed, assassin. And his mother married his uncle within a month. And he had this terrible news to deal with. And there's an actor, X, who is playing the role of Hamlet on stage. He's so overwhelmed with grief, having lost his father and his married, his uncle, mother married his uncle in a month. Now, what would be the grief, the degree of grief? Extremely high, isn't it? Mr. X is playing the role of Hamlet in extreme grief. Now, when he's, he has to identify with the role so much so that the audience are affected by that that act, isn't it? You, you get, you, 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 almost the audience are shedding a tear or two. That's how great an actor you are. But while the others are shedding, what is the role of Mr. X? Is Mr. X grieving? He is perfectly detached because right throughout he knows I am Mr. X playing the role of Hamlet. I am not Hamlet. There is that thin line, you know. Otherwise, every role you play, you identify with the role, you get attached to the role, you get attached to those who are involved in you playing that role and suffer the consequences. But just get into the role based on your obligation perform it and get out as if you have got nothing to do with it. You will perform that to the best. You will give every, every ounce of your dharma, whatever you are expected to do. Thereafter, you get in and get out. Clean slate. 
this is what means sakshi means sakshi means not in action sakshi means you are very active you play the role so you are the same before and after the role so if we are able to inject this spirit of being a witness why we are playing the role so the i repeat reiterate being a witness to the role is mr x not being affected by the grief as he is playing the role of hamlet you are completely detached from within but yet you play the role whatever the role demands you will play the role and what determines what role you play your duties obligations you will have special duties you will have regular duties nitya karma I mean regular duties, naimitika karma, special obligatory duties. They come once in a while. You have to perform that. And if and it is this wisdom that helps you to remain a witness. Otherwise, you everything that happens around us, uh, we absorb. Other day, I was giving an example as I was talking. Being detached is like being a a butter paper being attached is like being a blotting paper a blotting paper is that which absorbs everything and a butter paper remains detached you put a butter paper immersed in water it remains unaffected lakshmi ma be like the butter paper not the blotting paper trying guruji so difficult trying identify with the self it will become very easy you will rise above the physical absence the emotional absence the intellectual companion everything will rise above it try <laughs> yeah to be the butter Try paper it. is to be the butter paper is not that easy <laughs> in fact you all should say yes actually very easy guruji i have been doing that for all these years it's very easy you must say i look forward to hearing that the secret is early morning swadhyaya you don't do that you will not get the cream of wisdom you will you will be well informed but you will not get wisdom the only way you gain the wisdom is through the process of reflection which is done the early hours talking of that i would again remind you all of the event that's coming your way tomorrow is of an entire workshop that is designed around the nuances of how to reflect and how to extract that hidden wisdom in the knowledge that you all have it's a very carefully thought over workshop which gives you the entire idea so if anybody is coming new tomorrow he would have every piece of information that would convince him that you should embark on this journey of reflection and also enthuse you all to consider reflection now i know how many of you are reflecting you should know so if you do that you would find yourself very objective yogeshi i know you have been very patiently listening uh, please forgive us for the little hiccup we have had today of uh, internet but to a large extent I, i hope you have followed what was said sir uh yes sir yes i did i did i was uh, i i'm i'm new here but still you know asha ji uh, she was you know i'm just uh, like you know in touch with her for almost 
more than a couple of years, uh, more than two, three years, and you know, we exchanged some text and uh, send it to her, and she was very much interested to join you people to see this thing. But unfortunately, I was not able to join because of some different obligations and everything. But today, I decided that I must, and I just said today, no matter what, I'm going to be here and try to be as long as possible. Uh, and you know, uh, I, I, I was with you guys from the beginning, so I, I listen everything, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm too new to make any kind of a comments or any anything at this point. Uh, just you know, but uh, many many of the things what we we just discussed today, I mean, uh, yes, we have read these things, and particularly part of the things what you said about the the uh, your uh, part of the actor. That, that is that is so true. That is so true. Like like what I, I was a teacher, so uh, of the math teacher here, and exactly the same thing. When we go to the classrooms, we have to be exactly the math teacher to, to expect them to. I mean, my students to be expected to learn from me and to be. We were we were playing the parts of like their brother, their friend, their parents, and the teacher and everything. And as soon as you get out of the classroom. You are just to do on your own whatever you are supposed to do. Because as you mentioned that if we embed ourselves into that role and just get affected, then you get emotional. And th that affects you. So that's that's why we knew that, you know, when we went to the doctor, they just said, you teachers are always good when you're on, on your vacation. But as soon as the school starts, your blood pressure goes high, you know. <laughs> but, you know <laughs> But but we said that yes, it's it's a very hard job to teach other people's children and to uh, discipline them. You know, that's. Uh, but but we did it. I did it for many years, and uh, that was okay. You know, but I feel I feel that way. That's why I really enjoy every bit of it. I enjoy every bit of it, and I'll Happy I'll try to be as many times as possible. I'll try to be there with you people. Most and welcome. You. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you for inviting most, me. Most, most, most pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, Yogesh, it was a pleasure having you and, and uh, the thoughts you shared uh, did capture the essence of the, the concept that we concluded with, you know. Uh, so I'm glad and happy to have you. Uh, keep joining us. Okay. So we will we'll come back to the, the seventh mantra and we'll continue. Okay. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihyo Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihyo